I've got a new battery that I think you guys really should check out. My name is Ben, this is the Minuteman Prep YouTube channel, and when it comes to emergency preparedness, electricity is a vital point of emergency preparedness in today's world. It's just how it is. Now, there are multiple RV options and house options. You could do solar generators, power stations, DIY systems. There are a lot of options. Even if you have solar panels on your house already and you wanna add batteries, we can help you with that. Just shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com and we can do AC coupling setups. Take your house off grid, reduce your bill, all of that stuff. But for really portable DIY setups and or RV setups, I think everybody needs to be taking a look at this new mini 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. I'm gonna get into it why in just a second, but I've done a lot of testing on this. I really like Power Queen as a company, as well as the quality products that they're putting out. I haven't had a single issue. They respond to all my emails quickly. I even get them on the phone without any issues. So I really liked using them and working with them. So we're gonna go over this battery in this video right now. I've used multiple batteries. These are all lithium iron phosphate, okay? This is a 200 amp hour, 100 amp hour, and a 100 amp hour. But this is the crazy part that I wanna show initially. So first of all, this is called their 100 amp hour premium two or their mini, and it really is quite compact. I haven't torn it apart, but it weighs just a hair more, like a couple pounds more than this. This is what a typical 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery looks like. It's usually around 30 pounds or so. I highly, highly recommend that people swap out their RV batteries, because they're lead acid, with these kinds of batteries. But here is the crazy part. If we look at the size comparison, it's about 20 to 25% smaller on the width, pretty much the exact same height. But then when you stack it this way, you can really see how much smaller it is. It's a lot less thick, if I were to put it in those terms. You can see it's about 25% shorter this way and 25% shorter the other way. And it weighs pretty much the same. So in a lot of cases, you can actually fit two of these mini batteries in the battery storage compartment that goes on the tongue of your RV or in the storage compartment of your RV. Now it does come with posts already on the battery, but there are two additional posts included in the packet if you need them. This is so that way you can connect your inverter and charge controller. Now I keep a 3000 watt inverter uh, that I got from Renogy and I paid for it all myself. Uh, you wanna get a little capacitor like this. So what you do is you take your inverter and your battery, and before you connect everything together, you touch basically the wire that's on the battery to the same post that's on the inverter, and I've shown this in my other videos, but the reason you do that is it allows you to pre-charge the internals of the inverter. Because this isn't connected to anything, there's absolutely zero voltage or amperage or power in this inverter. And so what's gonna happen is if you just connect the batteries to it, you have a huge inrush of energy, and it actually will cause a spark. So you use a little capacitor like this, so that way you can get a little bit of energy into it, so that way it pre-charges everything so you don't get that spark. You only have to hold it on there for like 10 seconds. So the user manual is quite user friendly. You can see our charging voltage here, the recommended charge rate. So that's gonna be 14.4 volts at 200 amps, which is roughly 250 watts off the top of my head. But it's max continuous discharge is 100 amps continuously and the total battery capacity is about 1,280 watt hours. Now if we go right here, you can see even more specs that are really helpful. Obviously the cell type, drain capacity, all of that. But even right here, it shows you that it can handle up to 250 amps at 12.8 volts of draw capacity for five seconds. So it does have a really high output that you can put on it, which is really nice. Then of course you've got all the other specs and things here. And it is recommended that you charge it up every three months. So here you can see the cable wiring that's recommended for the type of power you're gonna be drawing off of it, how to connect multiples of these together. So the user manual is really, really good, color-coded, really good English. The bottom line being is they actually care. Technically, this stuff is coming out of China, but that doesn't mean that the company is bad. And that's been my experience, is they really do care about their customers, and they're giving discounts and stuff like that. I'll have links down below if you want these batteries. Now they do have different voltages as well, and different sizes. So you can get an original size like this, but for like 20 bucks more, you can get a unit of this size. And so in my opinion, it's much better to go with something like this versus this size. 
simply for the fact that you're gonna save so much space and which allows you to have even more batteries. Now they do have a unit that's like this, but it's lighter. So this one's from Time USB, and this is their 200 amp hour Pro and Power Queen has a very similar one that's rated to 200 amps output. And that's what I recommend for bigger systems rather than stacking up a lot of these is you could go with some 48 volt 100 amp hour batteries because 48 volts is more efficient when working with inverters. You just have to make sure you get a 48 volt inverter like a grow watt or something like that. But I've used lots of these 200 amp hour batteries and they work really, really well. People use them for golf cart builds, use them in their RV, use them in their home for doing off grid or backup power. They're just very simple to use. You simply connect these posts here to your inverter using that capacitor to make sure you pre-charge everything. And then you also tie in a charge controller. Now this is the MPPT charge controller that I use. It's huge, but that's because it can handle a lot of input. But the cool thing about it is it can do 12 volts, 24 volts, 48 volts. It has a variable output to the battery. So I can connect these leads to the battery here and then my solar panels to these leads right here and I can input whatever voltage I want within the rating here on the side from the solar panels and then output to the battery whatever voltage I've set up on the battery. So I can do parallel and series and the user manual shows you how to do that with these batteries and I can make my own DIY system very easily. As far as EMP protection and stuff goes, there is a battery management system which is basically a microchip that tells the internal cells how to work properly and charge and discharge at the same time. Technically what you would see in here is four different three point something volt, like 3.2 volt battery cells. And each one of them is gonna have up to about 100 amp hours. So 3.2 volts at 100 amp hours, then those four cells are wired together internally and that's how you get this setup. Now you could easily make one of these systems on your own. You could do the BMS, do all the programming, solder in all the leads and stuff like that. For me, I personally don't like doing that much of a DIY setup. I would much rather get something like this that's very easy to set up. And in a pinch, I can use very remotely. It's so lightweight. I wouldn't put it in a backpack by any means at all, but you can take it with you with an inverter and a charge controller and make your own DIY system pretty much anywhere. Really what I'm trying to say is I like these. I use them. I use them in my RV and I've used them mobily doing my own DIY setups as well. If that interests you, use the links down below. There's discounts there. I'm just trying to help you get other options. These DIY setups can be a little less user friendly when compared to a solar generator, but they can be much more affordable. So if you don't have the option or the budget to get a pre-made system, then going with the DIY system is gonna be definitely much more budget friendly and is going to be very reliable, easily rated to over 3000 cycles. You can use it nonstop for 10 years. I just like their batteries a lot. So check them out. See y'all in the next video.